the sofa just goes up on the sides a bit almost, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Quite cool. Oh, by the way, new sofa, guys. Dina and Sid are no longer on the floor. We're on the floor. <laughs> we got a sofa. Yeah. And it's from, uh, well, this actual sofa, you can get it from Habitat, but we didn't get it from Habitat because we got a hundred pound cheaper by yeah. getting from Mason du Mignon. You're not in focus, are you? Which is like a site in France. Well, yeah. we've got a first, Sid. So the title of this email is Isis Banter. Oh, Allah Akbar. Hi, Sid and Dina. First of all, I really enjoy your videos and admire you for discussing so many overlooked, overlooked issues in the Muslim community and find your confidence in British Muslims quite refreshing. This may sound like a really silly email, email, but it is genuinely something I struggle with in my day-to-day -day life. I'm 16 and have just started sixth form at a new school. After going to the same private Muslim school for five years, I didn't really know what to expect of non-Muslim people. My new school is not in London and so is not at all ethnically diverse. Hmm. The vast majority is indeed Christian slash atheist white people. As a mixed race hijabi, it was definitely quite terrifying starting at this new school. And I shit you not, out of six... 1,678 students, I am the only one with a headscarf. In all fairness, I'm not particularly bothered about people staring at me and don't get offended that easily. I actually enjoy standing out and being different. However, I've noticed that the white friends I've made at this school don't seem to have a problem with racist banter. Almost every day they'll racist make- Racist banter. Almost every day they'll make a downright offensive joke about Islam or Pakistan, I'm not even effing Asian, and launch into fits of laughter. From bombs to arranged marriages, in one short half term at this school, I've heard it all. At the beginning, so I wouldn't be considered as that extremist Muslim girl, I would laugh at these jokes and pretend I was okay with it, even cracking out my own. Did she write Muslim? Yeah. But I'd failed to realise that this was a common occurrence and I've grown quite sick of the banter. Sometimes the joke isn't even that funny, just highly offensive. I can mm -hmm. appreciate a good ISIS joke, but honestly, some of them are not the slightest bit funny. They just make me feel immensely uncomfortable and embarrassed. And the worst part is, if I then go ahead and make a joke, a genuinely funny one, about white people, they have the audacity to be offended. Anyway, I would really, really appreciate any advice because the best I've heard so far is just tell them you don't like it. Which is not the slightest bit realistic and I don't have the slightest clue how to tackle this. Oh, it's a bit of a doozy that is. Can you That's... come forward a little bit so, no, no, so I, I could be in focus? I think you should lean back because you know how comfortable that is, Sid. It is quite comfortable, isn't it? I think you should lean back. But I, I want to kind of get into it. So, if you could join me on this one. This so, is quite difficult, I think. It is quite a difficult one. Because if you are the only, literally, if you really are the only hijabi out of 1,600 people, that is insane. The thing is, when I was... Kudos to you for yeah, even wearing, wearing it. it. It's props to you. I, there was one, there was only one girl in a headscarf in my school as well. Really? Yeah. And yeah was she cool? In or high school. She, what, what happened? And, yeah, she used to get it as well. Did she really? Yeah. Uh, Did you never stick up for her? We went, basically there's, there's... Oh, the school's split in half. Yeah, there's yeah. the year split in half. I wasn't in her side, so... Mm -mm. Oh, I would have. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't take any shit in school. But My the first thing is, step, I, I think that's I, quite easy to say when you're popular. When you're popular. When you're, when you're blow, when you I, popular. No, I wasn't popular. The first day of high school, the first day of high school, first day of high school. You got I, it? I got, yeah, I got into to the line. I got in line and um, one of the white kids, obviously, because they were all white. <laughs> I don't know. He said something very rude. I don't remember it. Something about being a packy. And I choked him. Did you? <laughs> but the thing is... But don't resort to violence. That's not a good thing. <laughs> well, the thing is, it's different with her because these are her, ma these are her mates. These are her friends. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that. I'm yeah. saying, like, the problem... There's a massive problem. There's a massive problem with ignorant white kids and, yeah and i and think it's it's very reflective of what they hear at home yeah the problem is like when you're at that age you literally do not have a filter on your mouth yeah yeah, yeah. you, you, you don't really, think like, about don't what you're gonna say especially if you're like confident if you're really confident yeah. as well but the thing is i actually don't think there's anything wrong with it if they were fine to take jokes about white yeah. people I because mean, when i was in high school we my tight group of friends consisted of me and my sister so half egyptian half white a full-on white girl, Welsh girl, Katie, a uh, full-on Pakistani, two Pakistani girls, and then a black, my black friend, Desiree. And that was our really tight group. So like, we were all very diverse and we would throw jokes about each other, like, and each other's cultures and everything. 
but we'd all be able to take it. And then when somebody stepped the line, it would be very clear like, oh, you stepped the line and sometimes somebody, like somebody would, would be really pissed and you could see it and you'd actually have to apologize kind of thing. So we're, we're very res- respectful of each other, but also everybody could take a joke. Yeah, but the thing, the thing with that is you were in a different situation where you had some, you know, Muslims, then you had like a white person and then you're half white. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. You so we went all person. Muslims. Yeah, we went you, all Muslims. She is in a different situation she's where the she's one. the only one and yeah. all her friends are white yeah. and they're bitches. <laughs> yeah, that sounds a bit mad. And I, I really do feel for you, but I really do think, you know, okay, it is a bit shit just saying, oh, just tell them you don't like it, because then where does that leave you, you know? Obviously, you don't want to be a loner of school, in school. I think you like, have to weigh it up. No, I think what you've got to do is, you've got to be smart about it. Yeah, with these groups, and I've experienced this, there's always one that has the mouth and makes the jokes, and then they all join in. There's always one that's the leader. Yeah, you need to, it's not even like bullying thing. In every little group you have in a... Uh, in high school, you always have the alpha male, that one person yeah. in the group that instigates everything, that has the mouth, that thing, and they all follow along. Yeah. And chances are the instigator is making those jokes and then the rest are joining in and, and feeding off of that joke. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You just need to shut out that flipping instigator. But it's not at black and white, so don't just be like... No, don't do that. Oh, make, make a white joke, you know, because no. we've established that doesn't work. But you need to try and be smart about it, so... You need to pull... No, it's, you need to be witty about it. So, for example, they, they don't actually realise that you've just insulted them, but you've made them feel really stupid and kind of shut them up that yeah. way by making them feel really small, I think. If you make that yeah, alpha yeah, okay. male suddenly feel really, really small in front of everybody else and then everybody else is kind of laughing with whatever you've just said or what you've just done, they're going to think twice about the thing is, about uh, taking the piss out of you because they know that, they can, that you can make them look the, this small. You become the alpha male. You saying, need to take over. You take over. They have to know that you're smart and witty and stuff like that and you'll put people in their place. And yeah. nobody wants to look stupid in front of people. Don't make them look stupid in front of each other. You know what I mean? make them look stupid to everyone else. The person who's making those jokes. Yeah. Yeah. If, they, if, they, if they're bundled up together and they're making a joke like that, then you don't necessarily have to re- um, reply to it like in a witty way or anything. But if, there's, if you're surrounded by people and you get, you, you get a like, oh, reply, <laughs> then they're just like, oh, well, I'm not going to try that again. You know, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not even going to bother. But, you know, if I was you, for example, let's say Sid was alpha female of the pack and you're like, oh yeah, because you, know, you smell a curry. And then all the girls start laughing and I'm you now. And I'm like, oh, ha ha, wow, so funny. This is what I would do. I'd be like, I'd, be, I'd laugh along with them. I'd be like, ha ha ha, oh my God. Wow, getting a bit old. Never heard that one before. <laughs> okay, what the that? You know what I mean? Really sarcastic kind of thing like so you're basically joking back with them but you're not particularly applauding that joke that they just this did. always works this always works all the time oh oh this wait wait well this. done well done oh well done do you want to go to star for that so original oh that's amazing well done you want me better shall i change your fucking nappy <laughs> no <little> bitch <laughs> or you know what always used to work like everyone's go, everyone's like laughing because somebody just did a punch time you, and you go like this, you go, ha! Or you go, Always you works. go, <laughs> your mum. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a joke as well. Yeah. But it's quite clear that, okay, you guys are, ain't funny now. Can you think of something else? You've got to be smart, but you've got to hit it, hit them where it hurts. Yeah, and you've got you've to be smart and you've got to be funny, but... You've also got to do it quite firmly so that you know not to be messed with. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If it gets too much and that alpha female is like getting too much, then pull it to the side and say, don't fuck with me. <laughs> Just be like, listen, love, you're getting a bit too big for your boots. Yeah. I've, I've let a few things slide wait, now. Wait, wait, wait. You're Just getting a bit listen, too big for your boots. You're getting a bit too big for your boots. You're never too big for the boot. Yes. Oh my God. Everybody will be like, shut down. Amazing. <laughs> shut down. In it. <laughs> Weren't they? Yeah. Yo, we've done it. That's what you got to do. 
yo, do that. I bet you she's going to email us and be like, yeah, it works. It was everybody yeah, thinks so, I'm cool so as hell I'm at, now. I think we're on the money. There's definitely alpha female and everything. And you need to shut her down. She needs to be yeah. shut down. Yeah. I, I just hate that shit because I've gone through it. Flipping hell. Yeah, me too. Me too, loads. But I used to just be like, oh, shut up. Oh, oh, shut up. That's what I used to do. <laughs> it's just mad how much literally white people <laughs> I don't want to say all white people though, obviously it's not, obviously not. It's not all white obviously people. not all white people but sometimes oh, oh, sometimes oh, 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 it's just crazy yeah. no and then the, probably the girls are like we're not racist one of our so, best friends oh, is a Pakistani oh, 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 oh. and she's not even Pakistani yeah yeah literally call everyone a Paki yeah everyone yeah they do and they always say dirty Paki dirty Arab smelly Arab oh, oh, oh that's nice because stingy stingy Arab uh, you're, all of this doesn't reference how clean we are, how 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 much we'd like to... It, it literally referenced the colour of our skin. Yeah. Like, oh, nice. Very, very fucking nice, Something doesn't it? Something And like you said the other day in the BAFTA vlog, like it's ingrained in people's heads. Mm. And they're like, oh, well, I'm just having a laugh. I'm just... Well, well yeah. you're not. You're having a laugh at my expense. Yeah. And it's because of... The, who I, my ethnicity who I, yeah for like, god's sake it's not even about how thick i am or something like that it's literally about <laughs> not that that's that okay either it's literally about who my parents are where i'm from and where i'm from the cho jokes white people make sometimes make are piss, man. crazy so for example you know loads of people are like oh so but what about when asians take the mick out of white people that's the same that's so bad I don't think it is the same because... I don't think it's the same. So, like, they have never experienced any problems with, when, like, being white in, in real life. Whereas, you know, Asian people, brown people, black people do... It. So, you know, it's different. Yeah, I know. It's, it's the whole different th when you get... It's the whole thing, like, when in America... Wait, we're going a bit off topic here, but I want to say this. In America, when the whole uh, Black Lives Matter campaign sort of thing came out, right... And then off the back of that, they're like, all lives matter. No. Yeah, yeah. So when, when people, when the Black Lives Matter movement was happening and then not even just white people, just loads of other people were like, oh, actually all lives matter. The point is we already know, everybody already know all lives matter, but it's black people that are not being heard. And so by saying, oh, all lives matter, you're like ignoring the problem. You're dismissing it. You're dismissing it and acting like it's not important right now when actually it is. All lives matter argument compared to Black Lives Matter is just bullshit. It's irrelevant. It's, it's irrelevant. irrelevant. It makes no sense. Yeah. You can't come back on it and go, all lives matter. Yeah, well, because everybody, wasn't the everybody fucking... already knows that. It's not, yeah. it's not an argument. The point is, There's that a we're problem. trying to make now, is Black Lives Matter and people need to be aware of this situation. Yeah. Not, like, we already know all lives matter. Like, everybody already knows that. Yeah. But, but it's not all lives and white lives that are going through this police brutality shit in yeah. America yeah. and ev all over the world to be fair black people get black people have to put go through some shit all over the world doesn't matter where yeah. you're from even in Egypt even in the Pakistan. way they treat black people is disgusting yeah we were having this conversation the other day me and Dina and we're not going to bullshit anyone right people are like oh Pakis get it worse uh, Pakistani people get it worse Asian people Arab people get it bad More Muslims get it worse Muslims blah, blah. Get it. but if imagine the being double whammy, a black Muslim a man, imagine being hijabi. a black imagine being a black Muslim hijabi that's like or a black Muslim that's like that's double whammy that's like oh, yeah. the we, two most we feel for you right yeah, now <laughs> the two most yeah. hated things in the world right now from yeah. narrow-minded ignorant idiots being black and being Muslim that's and, like and you know crazy. what? This brought on to a, us onto a, another part of the conversation, which is how loads of people, um, not just white people, just people who are not black, using the whole um, black people being underrepresented and that kind of thing, and exploiting that to their own gain and their own benefit. Yeah. Kind of like, kind of, kind of like when you watch um, big charity. Uh, shows on TV that we have here in the UK and you've got the token white person going to visit all the poor people in Africa and saving them essentially. Praise if you do something the, the, it, for black people Not for black people, ju just include it, it, you know, yeah, including yeah, if you, black it, people. Yeah, yeah, let's say then, yeah, so if you basically, if you've helped black people in some way or you, you know, the black movement in some way but you're not black, you get so much more praise and credibility than when a black, a black person, person does it. Does it, and when black people have been doing yes. it for their people. So, so for years exactly. and years and years. So, what about the black people that are doing it? So, 
so, that so all of just, a sudden, it's just like full circle. Like, yeah, all of a it, sudden, it just defeats oh. the purpose because, like, okay, so this non-black person is helping all the black people out and is getting all the credit for like round of applause. Oh, we'll acknowledge, yes. we'll acknowledge them. We, we've acknowledged the black people, but we won't acknowledge but, the, but, the black people who are actually but doing this. I'm not this. black, and I, oh, you know, it's really confusing. It's really hard to try and explain, and I hope nobody gets offended. But I think it's a really important way to look at things because. Loads of people don't realise. I totally understand when I listen to some black people and they say things like, we don't need you to do that for... Do you know exactly. what I mean? Because, for example, like cultural appropriation. When somebody takes something from, you know, the black culture and makes it all really cool and glamorises it and then they're like, oh, I'm just, I'm just embracing it because I love the culture, blah, blah, blah. And a black person's like, we don't need you to glamorize it for us and suddenly make it cool. No, but and this has been part of our culture for years and it means something to us. And we've never been apl applauded or complimented for it. But then when you, who's somebody who's not black, you might be colored, but you're not black. And, that, and that's, the, that's the point at the end of the day. And suddenly you get all the praise in the world for acknowledging black people. Like, fuck off, seriously. Yeah, like, I just... People, like, I, I really hate, I think it's exploitation. That's how I look at it. Like, I it's think it is exploiting it, it for, and it's for your own gain. People in black communities in every sort of field, they're doing great things, but they never get credited. They never get credited. As much as a non-black person would. And yeah. that is a problem. It's a major problem that is. Mm. You know, we don't, we don't, and you know, we need to recognize that problem. For, for example, even, right? When I did London Modest Fashion Weekend promo video, I tried to get, loads of black uh, bloggers on board, like black modest bloggers on board, but loads of people don't realize that that promo video was actually voluntary. So like loads of bloggers, I don't know, they have this idea that I got paid for it and blah, blah, blah. So understandably they were like, you know, this is, this is our rates, blah, blah, blah. But there really, there was no budget for it whatsoever. And also a lot of the girls that we wanted on board were abroad or timings just didn't work out. We literally had to film this video in one day and it was very last minute, let me tell you. So in the end, we didn't manage to include. In fact, the only two, the, there were only two bloggers in that video anyway. It was just me and Zena. The other two weren't even bloggers. They were girls who just were, girls who just wanted to be a part of it because they, they kind of, they agreed with, with the whole movement and modest fashion, etc. So the only two bloggers in there were only me and Zena anyway, right? So, and, and so this is what I want to say also in like the modest fashion industry where Muslim hijabi black women are not represented. But if you have a look at um, Muslim black owned brands, they have been using black models, etc. since the beginning of the launch of their clothing line, but they never get any, any notice for it or any, not or any kind of like praise for doing that because well, everybody's just like, oh, well, they're black, so well, why wouldn't black, they use so black people, right? Fine, yeah. But then when a non-black person includes black person, it's like, oh, diversity, <laughs> fucking genie. Do you know what I mean? Do you know how frustrating that could be? You know what? To be honest, we can't really talk from a black person's perspective. I, 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 no, I understand I can, how frustrating I, I, that I could be because... I can understand because, because I would from, be... people, from black people that I've spoken to or I've seen say certain things. I, I can understand yeah. how that could be frustrating. I, Just like how I felt when Dolce & Gabbana came out with the Abeya exactly. line. That's what I'm saying. And I was like, no. I can understand wh where they're coming from because, do you know, when you see like fashion ha fashion houses like turn around and like- Like Michael Kors. Nick, nick the Not bloody- Michael Kors, Mark nick, Jacobs. The, nick the bloody Pakistani chapel that uh, my flipping family in pa Pakistan have been wearing forever and turn it around and make it something cool. That shit pisses me off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, Paul Smith, right? Yeah. Thing telling that is, shit for four hundred pounds, telling everybody, "Oh, look how cool this is," because we've been telling everybody how cool this is forever. No, no, so, no, 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 no. <laughs> not, e not, not even look how cool this is. Look what I came up with. Oh, look, what I came up look with. Look what yeah. I came up with for white people to come and take that and suddenly make it stylish and fashionable, and it's and really, really stylish when a white man wears it. Yeah. But when a Pakistani man in tradition, tra traditional clothes wear it, ooh, look at his funny shoes. <laughs> and also uh, when Marc Jacobs did it on the runway, which wasn't this fashion week, it was the one before that, I think, and he had the dreadlocks on white models. It wouldn't have been a problem if they were on black models, but they were on white models. That's where the problem is. And you know, I don't think it's okay for people to just be like, we're embracing, it's fine. I don't think, because when people are quite, quite obviously offended and visibly pissed off by this then you really have to like kind of wake up yeah you know what i mean and I, it's like what we were saying on instagram live earlier you know i feel like loads of people appropriate by accident 
with a lot with lots of things and that's not the problem the problem is when you've been informed on something and somebody's told you listen this is offensive but then you ignore it or you try and justify it with the with you're just trying to embrace or you're trying to do that when you do that and you ignore the fact that this group of people are offended is where the problem lies i think isn't it yeah we've gone we've gone way off topic, topic but this is hopefully this will help you because we did give good advice just before this this is a this is a thing there's major problems with yeah it feels you know not genuine coming from me because i'm not black but yeah <laughs> there and, is a major and problem same here really because the, the thing is a... loads of people get really offended because they don't understand or they can't get their head wrapped their heads around cultural appropriation it's just like coldplay and beyonce when beyonce wore all the indian clothes and put a bindi on her head and all the indians were annoyed they had a right to be annoyed yeah of course they did because they get taken the piss out when they wear bindis oh. and then you come and then to all festivals of, all of a sudden you come to a festival and there's a little and there's little girl girls. in a little a little top and a crop top and she's wearing a bindi on her head and, and a massive like, nose ring oh my god so stylish yeah you i've done that I've done that before. I've worn, I've worn. Um, they're not bindis. What's the other ones? The, the decorative kind of ones. Yeah. I've worn those for fashion before, um, without even thinking twice. And now I'm a bit older. I'm like, okay, there's a little bit. Do you know you really shouldn't do that? You know. When I was in school, and I had loads and loads of Pakistani friends, and it was always like the white girls or the Arab girls that looked so much prettier in prettier. tradition. Yeah, in traditional Asian clothes, it was always like, oh, you look amazing. And even, it was even the Pakistani girls saying that. Go, oh to Stacy or something. Oh, Stacy, you look amazing with her blonde hair, blue eyes, and she's wearing a sari. You look so nice. But then when an Indian woman or a Pakistani woman is wearing traditional clothes or a sari, it's like, oh, what the fuck is she wearing? You know what I mean? Do you get me? Like even me, during high school years, I used to go around wearing Asian clothes and I used to wear it because all the Asians would think I look amazing in it. But when I look at the bigger picture and, and when Asians aren't getting complimented with the way the style of their clothing, but then I am, and it's not even from my culture. I've worn Asian clothes to Sid's sister's wedding before, and you know, nobody's ever had a problem with that before, ever. In fact, sometimes people have a problem when I don't wear Asian clothes to an Asian wedding. So then there's differences there as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? We got Anyways, <laughs> we hope we gave some good advice to you, and hopefully you can nip it in a bird with those friends of yours and get all this shit sorted. And no, ISIS banter is not cool. You don't, you don't need people like that in your life. And um, plus, you're in school, so give it a year or two. It'll be over soon enough. Yeah, true that. And, and you'll have like real people, real yeah. friends in your life. Well, you're anyway, not even going to know these people in like you, five years' time. You are not even going to know them, and they'll be irrelevant. we got to go pick up Hannah, I so to to hopefully well. that helped. In we should, really some... should have used the that's, light. That's probably... Look how dark. That's probably two is. videos, you know. Potentially. Ooh, Potentially two videos. Okay, bye.